you know, too many of us as a people, when we look at history, we say, oh, the original Arabs were black, the original Chinese were black, the original Europeans were even black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we say black people were everywhere. Well, mm -hmm. if that's the case, we can find them in the history book, but the question mm -hmm. is, can we find <laughs> them, you know, in today's, not books, but presents, right. you know, can we yeah. go to these places and find people who look like us? Yeah, and certainly we find a lot of persons who are from um, Asia, in the Caribbean and in Africa, mm -hmm. but we're on a quest now to find some of our people <laughs> right. who are actually now in Asia. So in just having a little look at um, the history and you know, the aspects of how we relate to um, particularly China, you know, I don't know if many of you know, but China is Africa's leading trading partner, not the World Bank or you know, an amalgamation of different nations. China, they're the number one um, trading partners of, of Africa. And China obviously has had long-standing relations in Africa and in the, the Caribbean, um, and a, a very powerful um, um, note that I was looking at was the China Development Bank. The Chinese Development Bank it literally does more business globally than the World Bank. Wow. You know that's a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, if there is investment capital that is available, then we've got to also learn to structure ourselves to take advantage of this capital that is available. And another very interesting statistic that I looked at in regards to the US versus China, as you know, the, the Chinese economy is the fastest growing economy in the world and it's set and scheduled to overtake the US by 20, 13 and obviously the pandemic has slowed down right. its its thrust however it is scheduled to overtake the us by 2030 but the a much more uh, important statistic than just the, their rate of growth is the amount of their people who'd have been able to pull up out of poverty you know they have one point just under 1.4 billion um, Chinese, you know, in China, right? Mm -hmm. And um, with a population as, as vast as, as theirs, 1.4 billion, uh, just under, to, to pull up <laughs> mm -hmm. that vast amount of people or persons out of poverty mm -hmm. is a massive undertaking. And they've been able to, to multiply the minimum wage from generally $1,000 a month to now 4,000 plus gain onto 5,000. So their middle class has just right. like expanded, you know, and their poverty level is less per capita than it is in the United States of America. So they've got less poor people in China now than you do in the United States, you know. So all of that to say they've done a heck of a job for those who are living in China to actually be able to enjoy some of the benefits of the growth of the country. Because as you know, generally in Western countries, the wealthier just get wealthier yeah. and the poorer just gets poorer yeah. and there's no middle. <laughs> you're either this or you're that. Mm -hmm. And most are that, <laughs> okay? So with that said, um, it gives me great pleasure this evening to introduce one of our own, one of our sisters who have been in China for 14 years working in the field of education. She is originally from Zimbabwe and she has overcome many um, trials and you know, faced many a circumstance in order to be able to be speaking to us this evening from China at 2 a.m. in the morning. This is a very special guest, yeah. our dear and beloved sister and Dr. Samantha, who is our special guest today. She's also an entrepreneur, 
and she is flying the flag with that beautiful African garment in China. So let's welcome our dear sister and doctor, Samantha Sibada. Let's give her a big round of applause.